have joined us today for a very important conversation. Uh, the Secretary and I traveled here this morning from Washington, D.C. with the specific purpose of hearing from you about how you are thinking about what should be the priorities for our nation and our world. So I'm very much looking forward to this conversation. I'm honored to be at Claflin University, which has a distinction of being a center of academic excellence in our country. And, um, and I thank the president of Claflin for joining us this morning and for the work that you do. Uh, proudly, he has shared with me that Claflin is among the top 10 HBCUs in the country. And as a proud graduate of an HBCU, um, I understand what that means. So, thank you all. So, um, our student leaders, let's think about this. When, um, when people are in college, they're usually in the age range of about 18 years old to 24 years old. And it's a very specific phase of life, 18 through 24. It's a phase of life where an individual becomes an adult in so many ways that is more than just chronological. It is about a phase of life where people with the blessing of being in a college environment have the opportunity to meet people they may not have otherwise met. They have the opportunity to expand their mind based on their interests and their curiosity and their passions. It is a phase of life where individuals start to develop and decide who they are in relation to the world, and certainly in relation to their nation. It is a phase of life where when an individual has decided to go to college, it is also about the next initiation in their birthright of leadership, and the decision they have made to accelerate their leadership role not only in their family and community, but in our nation. So for all of those reasons, I'm very happy to be here and to have this conversation. I think about it on a number of levels. Um, today, we are celebrating um, the uh, national get out and uh, our registration, voter registration. And so when I think about that, and I think about the last big election we had in 2020, um, I'm proud to report what you all know, which is that over 50 percent, over half of the people in our country who at the time were between 18 and 24 years old voted. Over half. It was a record high. And these young voters at the time told us what they wanted. They put in an order for what they wanted to see in their country. They said, we want to see college be more affordable which includes knowing that they can graduate from college, they can leave college, not being unduly burdened by student loan debt. So the president just signed an order that says that students will have $10,000 of their college loan debt relieved. And if they're a Pell Grant recipient, that would be $20,000. Students said when they voted, and young people said when they voted, we want to know that you are dealing with the issue of Pell Grants, because we need more in terms of Pell Grant benefits to meet the mark of what we need so that we don't have to struggle to pay rent or buy food or buy books and school supplies. And so we have increased Pell Grants by $400 per student per year, and we, are, we intend to double that in the coming years. Students said, and young voters said, we want to know that you're going to invest in our centers of academic excellence, and in particular, our HBCUs and minority-serving institutions. And so we have invested over $5 billion to put the resources into these institutions that are putting the resources into the future leaders of our country. You all said, and young voters said when they voted in 2020, this crisis that is called climate change is real, that the leaders from years before have probably sold us short in terms of taking it seriously, understanding the urgency of it, and we want leadership that will accelerate the resources we put into saving this precious planet. And so we put an historic investment, the largest in history, 
into dealing with the climate crisis, $370 billion, and it includes the largest investment in environmental justice in history. Young people said, we are entrepreneurial, we got ideas, we are innovators, but we know that there is a real divide, in particular a racial wealth gap in America on many levels, including when it comes to access to capital. So we invested an additional $12 billion into community banks because we know community banks are in the community and understand the needs and desires of that community as well as the talent and capacity of community. And that access to capital should not be a barrier to innovation and creativity and what we know those small businesses are, which is part of the economic life blood of a community and by extension, all of society. Young people are leading on all of these issues, including one of the biggest issues that is affecting our nation that frankly I, I think we are just not talking enough about, which is the issue of mental health. But actually, I think in so many ways, our young leaders are leading on that in a way that some other leaders may not be. Because we recognize, in particular, that over the last couple of years, through the pandemic, we literally told people to isolate. Which means people were literally by themselves. Suffering from all that that pandemic represented in terms of loss of life, loss of normalcy. For so many people, loss of a job. And so the effects of that all still linger in a very profound way. In fact, three in five college students has been diagnosed with some level of need for mental health care. And that's just among those who have been diagnosed. I have long believed that when it comes to the health care policy in our country, we still have so much more and we still must do so much better when it comes to mental health. And we must realize it is health care. We've got to stop acting as though the body starts from the neck down. We also need health care from the neck up. And there should be no stigma about that. People should not be made to silently suffer. So all of these issues are uh, issues that I look forward to talking with the leaders here about in terms of the work we are doing, how it is affecting you, and how we can do better. Because you are our future. And when I look at each of you, I know our future is bright. So with that, I'm going to pass the microphone to the Secretary of Education, Secretary Cardona. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Vice President. Um, it's an honor to travel with you and to really just uh, visit during HBCU week, uh, Claflin University, to celebrate excellence and to, to hear from students. It's always the best part of our job, really, to, to listen to our students. Um, and we leave inspired, we leave with homework, uh, to go back to DC to make sure that your voices are reflected in the work that we do. Who better than you, right? Who better than you? Um, so thank you, and I appreciate also the uh, acknowledgement of voter registration and the importance that universities, uh, the important work that universities have to ensure uh, that students recognize uh, that such an important part of our democracy. Voting matters. Elections matter. I'm honored to be a part of this team. Uh, President Biden, uh, Vice President Harris, walk the walk. The American Rescue Plan that was only voted on by half of Congress. Provided $40 billion for higher education institutions. Prevented closures. Allows us to have the conversation about how do we improve services in our universities. HBCUs who always punch above their weight. $6 billion in this administration in a year and a half. More than any other administration combined. Year and a half. Claflin University, $21 million from the start of this administration. 
Money alone doesn't uh, fix issues. Investing it in what is needed does. And who better than you to give us feedback on how to continue to improve this, especially around areas of mental health support. What we think might be needed and what students who are experiencing day-to-day -day classes, and they may be different. So th this is really an opportunity for us to listen and to hear from you how we should be thinking about um, not only providing the resources, but giving advice and giving guidance and giving direction at all levels on how best to use the uh, funds to support students who are still going through the pandemic. As the Vice President mentioned, many students are coming back having lost loved ones, having experienced such a, like a, a quick transition back and haven't really processed everything that's happened. The adults, too. So this is an opportunity for us to listen. Uh, you are making a difference. In my conversation earlier with you all, I heard what your plans are, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And you were very well prepared here. You represent uh, not only this university, HBCUs, our higher education system well, and I look forward to the conversation. I do. And to kick it off, I'd love to turn to Daya um, to give us a brief remarks on uh, your small business. Good morning, everyone. My name is Daya Fogel, and I'm a senior Alice Carson Tinso Honors College Scholar studying mass communication with dual concentrations in public relations and digital media here at Claflin University. I am a Greenville, South Carolina native, a member of the Gamma Phi chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a leader, a creative, an entrepreneur, and most of all, a proud HBCU student. If we're being completely honest, I started my business because I needed a little bit of extra pocket change. But throughout that journey, I realized that I had a hobby for graphic design. And through that, it transitioned into an outlet where I get to help fellow small businesses like my own. I am the founder of Days Design, a boutique creative marketing agency that helps small business owners improve their messaging and branding through custom strategy, graphic design, branding, social media management, and content. Earlier this year, I had the distinct opportunity to be selected as a 2022 Black Girl Ventures and MBA Foundation Next Gen Scholar, so along with 24 other HBCU students. Through this opportunity, I participated in an eight-week business accelerator program that allowed me to focus on creating access to capital, training, mentoring, and new networks for HBCU business entrepreneurs, student entrepreneurs. After this program, I was selected as a top seven scholar and went on to compete in a business Competition where I won first place and over $18,000 in capital investment for my small business. Being a part of this program helped me to find ways to navigate the world of being a small entrepreneur and overcome challenges that come with being a young entrepreneur in today's day and age. Furthermore, my entrepreneurship journey has blessed me to be a tool to my HBCU community and to help pull other students up as I continue to climb. I represent one of only many young HBCU entrepreneurs that encompass our community, and each one of us have a unique story. Furthermore, we, and all of us, have the opportunity and deserve the opportunity and the investment, both financially and relationally, mm -hmm. that our white counterparts are more likely to receive when it comes to funding. So Vice President Harris, thank you for paying attention to our community that is often overlooked by many and undervalued by others. Thank you for seeing us, hearing us, and providing a space for young entrepreneurs like myself. Congratulations. Congratulations. It's exciting, huh? Uh, Days Design, huh? Yes. I think we might be needing a logo at the department, so maybe we can talk later. Maybe we can talk later. Um, and Greg, I know you have a small business, too. Tell us a little yes, bit about sir. that. Uh, so my name is Greg Westbrook II. I'm from <laughs> Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, currently, I'm a grad student here at Clapton. a lot. I was a collegiate athlete undergrad, uh, 
started my first business called The Underrated Clothing. And probably, I'd say like a year, year and a half in, uh, life caused my business to come to a close. And one of the first obstacles that we ever faced was my business partner. And it wasn't nothing against him, like it was all love. It was the fact that I'm all the way in South Carolina working two jobs in school. He's all the way in Illinois. Mm -hmm. And he's working and preparing for marriage. And once the business closed, I was devastated. Do we have a handle? I'm going to try to check it out later. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> what is it? Um, so one of the things I... No, it, at what? Oh, How do I find it? Yeah, yeah, at underrated style. And style is spelled S-T-Y-L-T. Ah, okay. I, I misspelled it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go check it out. <laughs> the vice president is going to check How cool is that? How cool is that? Thank you for sharing that. And you're right, through obstacles you learn. And Arteria, how are you? I'm so creative. I'm so creative. I know you uh, wanted to speak a little bit about um, your work in the mental health space, Ateria. Yes. That's critically important. Yes, very well. Um, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. My name is Arteria Gibson. I'm a senior math communications major with a concentration in public relations from Columbia, South Carolina. I've served in several leadership positions throughout my matriculation here at Clackwell University, but I currently serve as Miss Clackwell University for the 2022 yeah. 2023. Really impressed. I look forward to the conversation. I can't wait to get in it. I want to thank the media for, for being here. I think at this time we'll transition you out so we can get on with the conversation. Thank you again. Thank you, Let's give him a minute. I like how you said that about to be visionary, you have to take care of mind and body. Because, right. right, it's literally, if you're going to have the vision, it'll be better. 